geometric construction. What is geometric construction? Um, geometric construction simply talks about um, the way we construct items in geometry or in mathematics. The way we construct practical items using your compass and a pair of ruler only, okay? The compass and the pair of ruler only. There are a lot of other instruments for construction, but in mathematics and in WIEC level, even in mathematics, past question in WIEC, they say with the aid of a compass, a pair of compass and a ruler only construct the following plane uh, um, shapes or the given parameters. So today we'll just be talking about how to construct using uh, a compass, a pencil, and of course, a ruler. So let's go. The word construction in geometry simply talks about how we draw geometric items, such as your line, your angles, your circles, using um, the compass and the ruler. Of course, the ruler is also called the straight edge, okay? When constructing, it is very necessary to be careful because um, the neatness of your work speak volume of um, your participation, okay? The neatness of your work in construction do attract lots of math, even in exam condition. Let's quickly reel through the instruments we use for construction. I'm very sure you are um, familiar with a ruler, okay? What is the ruler used for? The ruler is used for measuring or drawing straight lines. The ruler is used for measuring or drawing straight lines. A quick advice about the use of a ruler. When you are using a ruler, please don't drag along your work because if you do, it stains your work. Okay, if you've, if you've drawn several lines and you want to draw or construct or measure a different line, just um, lift the ruler up, place it to the point you intend to draw uh, a different line or measure, then measure. Don't drag it along your work because it might spread, um, you know, um, your pencil markings along your paper and it makes it um, not neat, all right? So that is the use of a ruler. Another very important instrument is the compass. As we can see on the slide, the compass is used for drawing perfect circles. It can also be used to scribe an arc when we um, intend to bisect or construct several other items. But basically it is used to construct or draw a perfect circle. A quick advice once again, how do I use my compass? When I want to use my compass, I only hold it at the tip, all right? Just at the round head, it's called the tip. I hold it at the tip. Now the two legs have different end points. One of them is a metal pin, and the other is a point where you affix your pencil or your pen. So the pin part should be firm on your paper, okay? The pin part should be firm on your paper. Hold it at the tip, and you can now attempt to twist it round to attempt to draw using the other part. Your compass can be used to measure radius or radii for transfer radii from maybe a, uh, um, your, your, rule, your ruler to the paper and so on. We'll do a few of them and see how it works. The next one quickly is a protractor. What is a protractor? A protractor is used for measuring angles. A protractor is used for measuring angles. Now, a protractor is not used for drawing or constructing angles, okay? It is only used for measuring angles. I've seen cases where students are given um, an angle to construct. And because we have markings on our protractor, they quickly go to the protractor, mark it out, and draw it out. No, that is the wrong usage of a protractor. It is simply used to measure angles, especially if the angles are 
less than 180, then it makes it very convenient for usage. So it's very convenient for measuring angles that are less than 180 degrees. Now, if you look at the calibration on your protractor, you have two different scales there. We have the outer scale and we have the inner scale. The outer scale measures from zero at the left to 180 on the right, following a clockwise direction, all right? While the inner scale starts from zero at the left, move straight to uh, move in, a, in an anti-clockwise direction to 180 at the right. Very importantly, you must take note of two major parts of a protractor while you use them. The first one is the center of the protractor. The center must be aligned with your center of your angle while you use it, okay? The center of your protractor just um, let me try to bring it out here. Okay, this is the center of my protractor right here. Okay, now this center must align with your angles. All right, so um, your uh, measurement can be very uh, or very close to perfect. The second part of the protractor which you must talk about is your baseline. Now, your baseline must also align with the line uh, of the angle you intend to measure, just like we saw in the previous uh, um, slide. Before we start our construction in earnest, let's talk types of lines. There are many types of lines used in construction or in geometric construction, as this topic implies. But we'll be talking about just two in this class. The first one is your outline, and the second is the construction line. Of course, we have several others like, you know, your, your broken lines, your dotted lines, your center lines, and all that. But let's just talk about these two as it pertains to this um, topic. What are outlines? Outlines are bold, dark lines, which represent the actual lines to be constructed. Now, if I want to construct an angle, um, say an angle of 60 degrees, and I have lots of markings on my paper, but the outline will be those two lines that shows me 60 degrees. Every other line should be a construction line. That is why we say construction lines are thin and faint lines that are actually used to get your outlines, okay? So construction line can be used as scribes. When you scribe an arc, it should be a construction line. When you are marking a point, it should be a construction line. But your actual drawings that you constructed should be um, drawn as an outline. Furthermore, let's talk by section. By section. Okay. By section in geometry, simply means we want to cut a shape, a plane shape or a line segment, an angle segment into two equal parts, okay? That is simply what bisection means. I can decide to bisect a circle. It means I want to cut it into two equal parts. And how do I do that? I will simply draw a line that cuts across the circle, passing through the center and touching both sides of the circumference, okay? I can also bisect a line segment. I will simply cut it into two, starting from the center, okay? I can bisect an angle, bisect other plane shapes. So bisection is a term that is associated with geometric construction. I will be using it a lot in this class, all right? Um, let me just pause here for a while and ask, Everything we talked about right now, let's see how to apply them in reality. Let's say we want to bisect this straight line. Now, this straight line AB, we want to bisect it. Let me see, somebody has a question. 
Let's just go on. I will, I will create time for questions and observation, okay? Let's just go ahead. Assuming we want to bisect this straight line, AB, the first step to do is to take is draw a straight line and mark it out as A and B. Mark out the points A and B. In very good cases, your point A and B are, um, you are given a distance between A and B in very good cases, okay? So I can decide to say, um, let the distance between A and B be 10 centimeters. So what do you do? You draw a line, place your ruler on the line and mark out your 10 centimeters at the point A and your point B. So let's go ahead. After marking out our points, the next step, step two, with a compass measurement greater than half of the line, with a compass radius greater than half of the line AB, place your compass point pin at point A and scribe and add above and below the line AB. Now you can see that right on the screen. The first thing to do, place your compass pin at the first point A, then you go ahead to scribe and arc, just like what we can see on the animation. You scribe and arc above and below. Why do we um, increase our compass radius to be greater than half? So that eventually both um, arcs can touch, all right? So that the arc that we are about to draw can actually intersect at a point in time. And that's exactly what is going on. I scribe an arc and I scribe an arc. That is my second step. Let's go quickly to our third step. The third step is that with the same compass radius, I will change my point from A to B and I will scribe exactly the same arc. So they will cut at two points. Remember, this, is, this was why we increased our measurement to be more than half so that they actually touch. Now, look at that. I move straight to my point B now, using the same measurement. All right, that was my point B. And I scribe an arc and scribe an arc also. I believe everybody has done that. Okay, having done that, we move straight to the third step or the fourth step now, as it is. It's time for us to use our ruler again. Using a ruler, drawn a line connecting point X and Y. Now remember that the point where those two arcs intersect, we named them X and Y. So using a ruler, we just draw a perfect line. And this line now should be an outline. Those other arcs we drew were construction lines. Remember, construction uh, lines are faint and thin. Outline are bold and dark. So once again, I go to my point B, I draw my axe. Those are construction lines. Now this is my outline, this is my real line. I go ahead using a ruler to do that. Now this is my line X, Y. It's a perpendicular bisector of the line AB. So I have simply bisected my line AB. Now, please, in our next, in your next activity, you'll be having a quiz involving everything I'm explaining right now on this um, video. I will make it as a video, and you will see all this. Please, the next quiz, all your answers will be embedded in this very class. So let's go ahead. This is how to bisect a line segment. What if we had an angle? How do we bisect an angle? Let's go. If we have an obtuse angle, say A, X, and B, it can be an obtuse, this is an acute angle actually, it can be an obtuse, acute, reflex, um, whichever one. But once you have an angle, an angle is an enclosure between two lines. So given an angle, an acute angle in this case, place your compass pin at point X. Point X is the apex of my angle, this is my point X. So I will simply place my compass right here, my comp compass pin right here. And I'll go ahead to scribe two acts, cutting these lines that makes up my angle. The first one goes this way, 
and the second one goes this way. So let's um, simply wait for it to come again. I start by putting my compass pin at point X. Let's wait for that. Put my compass pin at point X, okay, using a convenient radius. Let's wait for that. Okay, here it is. I scribe an arc and I scribe an arc. And I call those points, points A and point B. What the second step? Having had my points A and B, I will go ahead, place my compass pin. Please, <laughs> who's that distorting my screen? Please, help, oh, please, yeah? relax, relax. Relax, don't distort my screens, please. Okay, so I'll place my compass pin now at point A and B, just like we got um, in the initial um, step. So let's wait for it again. Now, the act that you're about to scribe should be somewhere in between these two lines, all right? It should be somewhere in between these two lines, okay? So that they should intersect. In the real sense, every arc is a part of a circle. You can draw anywhere, but you must be very careful to draw where they will intersect, just like what I'm about to have now. Let's just wait for that step, step two. Or at point B, I scribe an arc. At point A again, I scribe an arc. You see that? And where they meet, let's call it a point A, a point Y. Very good. Let's see what our next step entails. The next step, okay, that is my point A and B. This was actually the point for B. That was step three. Now my step four, using a ruler, now we want to draw a straight line joining my point X to my point Y, knowing fully well that that line is supposed to be a bisector of the acute angle that we just have, okay? Now we can, um, we, we can follow these very steps in any different angle that we have, be it an obtuse, acute, reflex, angle, even a right angle, we will also be using this step. We use this step to bisect any given angle, okay? So once again, that's my line XY, and line XY is a bisector of the angle segment that we just have, okay? So what have we done so far? We've bisected an angle. We've, we've also bisected a line segment. All right, we've also bisected 